Hey guys, this is Fetter from 3D Print SOS. So you got that Vox Lab printer all set up. You got the bed nice and level, and you've been printing from the SD card. Good for you. Now, let's get into Cura, so you can slice your own SDL files. I'll see you at the computer. All right, so here we are at the computer. I have a couple things here. On the left, you see I have the Vox Lab Aquila PLA uh, profile that you can download in the description. And then we also have a 3D Benchy file that I got from Thingiverse. You can get it anywhere online if you download, uh, if you Google um, 3D Benchy, uh, I'm sure you'll be able to download this STL file. You can also use any STL file. This is just an example that I'm using here. Um, I went ahead and installed Cura and um, this isn't how it actually opens up. It's gonna open up uh, letting you add a printer. So I'm gonna go to settings, printer, I'm gonna to go to add printer. Here's the screen you're going to see. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop down the add non-networked printer. I'm gonna go down to custom and we can put in a name on the right here. So Box Lab Aquila for this printer. All right, here's where we're gonna put in all of our machine settings. So let's go to the X and the Y. We got 220 by 220, 250. Those are the dimensions of your printer. It has a heated bed, so we're gonna go ahead and check that. Now let's go to the print head settings. For the X min, we're gonna do negative 26. For the Y min, we're gonna do negative 38. For the X max, we're going to do 32. For the Y max, we're gonna do 40.5. And the gantry height is 30.1. Okay. You can go go back. You need to if you need to pause. You can look at those numbers. Next, we're going to go to the extruder tab. Okay, the extruder one tab. Uh, here, we're going to change the diameter of the filament. We're using 1.75 filament. So we're going to go check that. Let's double check these numbers. They look good to me. Okay, let's hit next. All right, now you should be seeing your printer on the top left. Here is where you're going to see your selection of printers. Um, right now you should have just one there and it should be selected. You can move it around, you can zoom in, you can drag. On the right side here, um, here's where you can see the standard profiles that are included, uh, kind of towards the top here. I obviously have a few extras, but the fine, normal draft, extra fast, coarse, extra coarse, those are all standard Cura profiles that are included with any printer. You could use them, you could tweak them, but uh, use this profile for PLA that I have set up for you. So we're gonna go ahead and install that. Click Manage uh, Profiles and hit Import on the top. We're gonna select that profile that I've included, hit Open. It's successfully imported, so let's click OK. Here we're gonna click on it and hit Activate. All right, so now your profile is selected. And on the top right, you can see Vox Lab Aquila-PLA is what it's named. On the left is the printer, on the right is the profile. All right, and you can kind of see it's gonna go on the list where underneath custom. Let's select that. All right, I'm gonna kind of scroll over these settings. I think if you want to dive in any deeper than this, you're gonna you're gonna want to research a little bit more um, because this is rather in depth and uh, the whole purpose of me including this profile is so that you can print right away um, and get to know the printer that way just by doing and experimenting. Um, so I have it set up for basic prints that don't need uh, any supports, um, but there is a couple things that you need to know. So towards the bottom, there is uh, a section with brim, uh, brim, is uh, basically lines that are printed just outside of the print and they help it stick. Um, because leveling and temperature, you're still figuring it out, having a brim to keep things from peeling off the edges is, is key. Um, so I've gone ahead and included a 20 line brim. The other thing that this is gonna let you do is while the brim is printing before the actual print, you can make micro adjustments uh, to the printer while it's actually printing that line. Uh, another benefit is uh, while it's printing that line, uh, it could uh, it's purging uh, filament. So you know, once it gets to the actual print, it's going to be printing um, with the filament that you put in. 
And also if you had some old filament in the nozzle, it's gonna purge that out. Um, and also if you kept the nozzle too hot for too long with filament in there, it's also gonna help uh, purge that out. So it gives you some time um, before the actual print, which is an added bonus to help it stick. All right, so now let's go toss in um, an STL. So here I'm just gonna throw in my Benchy and you'll see it appears right on the printer bed. Uh, here, let's zoom in here. Uh, something that's important here is that top left, that you see the blue, green, and the red, that is the zero, zero position, which is the front left corner of your build plate. So when this thing loads, that top, the front left corner is that where those colors are. That's how you know where the front and back of your printer is. So once you have the file in here, you can kind of see on the left, the little panel pops up. The top one is moving. You can move the file anywhere you want on the bed. Uh, it has these arrows you can use. Then there is scale, then there is rotate. And we're gonna rotate this thing to face forward right at us. Um, and the reason is because I added a seam um, to the back of the print. This way you can maneuver your files, you can place them how you want them so that uh, the seam is always in the back and it'll hide itself in one of the corners. And that way it's significantly more predictable. If you have it on random or hidden, sometimes they appear in places you don't want. Uh, like for example, if you were doing, if you were printing a bust that had a face on it, um, you sometimes you would see uh, little dots appear here and there from the printer starting um, each line, each layer. So having a seam in the back means you can rotate something so that the seam is in the back and hidden, which is what we're doing here. It's gonna be in the back of that benchy. All right, uh, so yeah, you can kind of move around, you can zoom in, but the most important thing you can hit slice, and this will take longer depending on the uh, complexity of this model. In this case, it's really quick, and it shows you how long it's going to print, in this case, an hour and 34 minutes. It's gonna um, weigh about 13 grams, it's gonna take about 4.2 meters of filament. So if we hit preview, now you're going to get the actual, um, uh, ability to see where the print head is going to travel that's on the bottom and on the right you're gonna see you can be able to see it layer by layer and if you drag this down you can see how the printer is actually going to make this so you get to see the infill the infill pattern everything right here and you can go ahead in your profile and make tweaks hit slice again and you can see um, what this is gonna look like so yeah I don't see anything out of the ordinary this this profile is pretty good um, you can go towards the top here, hit prepare again or preview. These are the two tabs. Don't worry about monitor, you don't have anything hooked up. But essentially you can go to the bottom right and hit save to removable drive if you have your SD card there. If you have it there, it will save right to the SD card and you're good to go. You can also select save the file and put it on your desktop if you want it or wherever you'd like to save your G code file. But essentially, this is ready to go. Now your printer understands what to actually print. This STL file is sliced. So there you go, guys. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, now you know how to throw an STL file into Cura. You have your own printer and your own uh, profile set up uh, for PLA. Uh, be sure to experiment. Um, you can change the temperatures. You can change the speed, although like I said, if you want to dive in a little bit deeper, there's plenty of resources online uh, to learn those things. And uh, maybe I'll dive deeper at some point. Uh, but for now, this is a good entry to getting actually printing on this printer. Throw in the printer, throw in the profile, put in any STL that you'd like to try, and go ahead and uh, hit print and see what it looks like. Uh, if you need supports, click Generate Supports. Get those things going. The stock settings I have in there should be okay to get started with. And then feel free to experiment. All right, guys. If you like the video, I think everyone knows what to do. If you think someone's going to find this useful, go ahead and shoot it over to them. Uh, come find me on Instagram if you want to see examples of my prints, all the things that I do, uh, product reviews, things along those lines. That's at uh, 3D Print SOS. You can find me on there. All right, guys. Have a good one. See you in the next video. Oh,